seven. Now we're going to use just those. Three, seven, eleven. We're going to go mod four again, but instead of one mod four, we're going to go three mod four. And when you do that, instead of getting 4 over pi, you get just pi in the numerator. There's a reason why these go mod 4, but you won't see that until later. And so you get a similar kind of morphism. OK, how, uh, how are these uh, results uh, derived? Okay. They come from this formula, which uh, has four gamma functions here, and the continued fraction here, and generalized a bit. Instead of just 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared in the numerator, there's also a minus y squared. There's the familiar x, and then 2x, 2x, 2x in the denominator. Okay. And you, then you get these things. Now, where does that come from? OK. Well, believe it or not, that really originally comes from Wallace. Okay. And I, it's hinted at in Wallace. And Euler read Wallace okay, and wrote a whole paper on it. And Euler was the first to, to, to write this down. But he didn't write it in exactly that form. He wrote it like this. Instead of four gamma functions, he has two integrals. Now these integrals, with a simple change of variable, become beta integrals. Now the beta integral, uh, just in case you may have forgotten, the beta integral looks like uh, the integral from 0 to 1 t to the x minus 1, 1 minus t to the y minus 1 dt. So by a simple change of variable, you can take each of those integrals and convert it into this. And this is equal to, here's where the gamma functions come, gamma x, gamma y, over gamma of x plus y. So if you replace each of those integrals by the gamma functions, then it turns out that the ones in the denominator cancel, and you just get the four that you saw in the previous formula. So Euler figured that out. And this, you'll see in a few minutes, was suggested by Wallace. OK, and Euler found that it could be made into this continued fraction. And and it's, he's, he gives a very clever argument for this. OK. Well, anyway, then, uh, what do you, uh, how does that help? Well, it, it helps in a very simple way. All you have to do to find out what these are is, 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 is then put in nice numbers for x. So for example, if you put 1 in for x, and then uh, and, and 0 for y on this side, and then just use standard formulas for the gamma function, and immediately you find that this is uh, 4 over pi. It just falls out into your hands. So uh, using the special values of the gamma function. So it comes out very easily if you're familiar with manipulating your gamma. So, so uh, it's not very very profound if you have that formula. OK. Now we come to uh, what might be the juiciest part of this uh, talk. The tables of John Wallace and the discovery of his product for pi. John Wallace was originally a code breaker uh, during the Civil War in, in England, the war between the uh, uh, when they uh, ousted the king. The, the Puritans. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that war. He, he, he worked in that war as a code breaker. And when he goes to do mathematics, you can see that. You, 
he's using, the, he's thinking like a code breaker. He decides that he wants to find out what, using modern terms, what pi is. Okay. So what does he know? Well, uh, he, he's a generation before Newton. But, and we usually think of Newton as inventing the calculus. But the calculus was in the wind. And the first chapters of Wallace's book show you how to integrate uh, simple functions like x to the p. Now, of course, he doesn't use this notation, which was to come later with Leibniz. But essentially, he has this idea. And he knows how to find the area under curves like x to a power. And he knows that you get this. <coughs> Excuse me. And also Pascal, in the in Descartes and Pascal. Uh, could be. Could be. Uh, and of course, he can also do linear combinations of things like this. But what he wants is to get pi, and that means he wants to get the area under a quarter of a circle. And this integral he does not know how to do. Okay. So <clears throat> the question is how can he tease out the mystery that's here? Okay, now let me show you his strategy for trying to figure out what it is. The, the, the strategy will be that he will study integrals of this type. 1 minus x to the 1 over q, all raised to the power of p. Okay, now the one he wants to do has the power of p equal to a half, which he can't do. But he can do it with natural number p. That he can do. And any q. Now the q he wants, you can see, is a half. But he's got to also have p a half. But he can do p a whole number. Okay. So this is what he does. This is, this is then his plan. Very clever. There. He's going to build a table. Here's the integral. And by the way, he, he doesn't evaluate the integral. He uses the reciprocal of the integral. And apparently the reason for doing that is that if he just uses the integral, he gets fractions in some of the blocks. But if he uses the reciprocal, he gets whole numbers. And they're easier to work with, so, so he uses the reciprocal. Now, here, here he has p is 0, p is a half, p is 1, p is 1 and a half, p is 2, and so on. P, and then the q, q is 0, q is a half, q is 1, 3 halves, and so on down here. And now he's going to try to fill in the blocks. Okay. Now the, one he, the thing he wants is right here. When p is a half, taking the square root, and when q is a half. Because that's 4 over pi. Remember, it's the reciprocal. So it's 4 over pi. That's what he wants to, to get, and, but he doesn't know that. So the strategy is, if he can fill in the, the squares around it, perhaps that will allow him to zero in on what is in this square. So there's the code breaker. He's trying to get the information from things he does know, and trying to get the unknown. Okay. So the first thing he does is he evaluates the integrals uh, for uh, p as a whole number and q as a whole number. And what he gets are binomial coefficients. Now, I've written them down in here in binomial coefficient notation. But uh, of course, he, he, he would do that. He would have numbers in there. Uh, no doubt he recognized them as binomial coefficients. I can't imagine he wouldn't have done that, because he's a very good mathematician. Uh, now, the first thing he notices when he does that is that there's symmetry in the table. See, this is the same, same as this. This is the same as this. There's symmetry around the diagonal. Things up here get reflected down here. Uh -huh. So that means so he can use that then in the future when when he is trying to fill in parts of the table. He will assume that the entire table has that symmetry, and he will then use that uh, that conjecture. 
So the, uh, the next thing he does 